Um, so what we're going to do now, I am going to guide you through the process of actually getting all the way to ebook. And you'll see that it's actually um, quite simple. Like a lot of what we do, a lot of where our time is spent um, is making sure that we have um, that every file as we're moving along um, is as correct as possible. And by doing that, we make things easier for us um, on, the, on the final end. So I'll go ahead and share my screen now. Okay. And so at the end of the last hour, we um, went through and we went through the entire SAM QC checklist. We figured out our SAM file is good to go. So the next step is that we go ahead and take our, um, our SAM file and upload it back into the hub um, so that we can convert that to, um, to SCML. If you go through the QC list and you've made no changes, you don't need to go through this step, obviously. Uh, but if you have made some changes, like we changed a couple uh, small, tiny things, um, we'll go ahead and do that now. So again, you go to upload, click where it says upload files, grab your SAM file, make sure you have saved it at this point, and then upload files. Again, we get our green check mark, so this is good, right? We've already gone ahead and checked everything, so we're going to go into SCML. So we're going to go from SAM to SCML. If you go into edit settings, you have um, several options, um, some of which are uh, you can rebuild the table of contents based upon the head levels um, and the head um, um, hierarchy that you have in your SAM file. So this works, for example, if you don't have um, if you don't have a table of contents, you can actually have the hub create that for you. Uh, Compose language styles, uh, Tim discussed that uh, before, um, where it essentially goes through and tags um, foreign language with a specific tag so that you're able to uh, more easily check it and uh, you know and deal with that once you get to the pub stage. Articulate spacing distinctions is what we've done uh, through composition, which is adding the first, last, and standalone. We're not going to select that because we've already at this point gone through several rounds of QC and everything is articulated as it should be. Um, renumber footnotes by chapter does exactly what it says. Um, and, and Embedding the index terms at page anchors will um, is for when you're working with an index, it'll actually include those terms at each uh, page anchor. So those page IDs that we talked about uh, earlier, but we don't need these for our demo. So I just wanted to go over these settings. Every time you go from one conversion to another, the settings change and they change automatically. So it's always good to click in there and check to see if there's anything that you need to do. So we're going to go ahead and save that and we're just going to go ahead and convert. I'll bring up the chat just in case any questions uh, come up. Okay, and so here you'll notice that um, our SML has taken the name of our project. That is, the hub will actually do that. That's why we didn't rename our files earlier or anything like that, uh, because now we have, um, you know, our file named as our. Um, as our project, we have our green check mark indicating that everything is okay. If you go to the stats, seeing I heard a click, I don't know if Tim wanted to say something yet. There you go. Yeah, sure. I, I'm just going to make one quick mention about this conversion. It sort of touches upon a philosophical aspect of the workflow. So um, two examples of different kind of conversions. If you have 10 Word files and you run Word to SAM for some reason, you get 10 SAM files at the end of it. If you have let's say you're working with multiple authors or you're working with multiple typesetters and they're typesetting, you know, different chapters, they might give you 10 XML files. If you convert that to SCML, you will get a file at the end of the process. So that's something to be aware of just so you have the proper expectations about what happens here. But it also touches on um, a sort of philosophical standpoint, because for us, the SCML file is like the archivable, durable, flexible, sort of container for everything that your project is. It's the version that should be maintained for future use. It's the sort of, if you, you know, to borrow a term, like hub from, from where every other conversions can happen. So it's this robust linkable file as well. So you know, please keep in mind that if this, if you're doing something in the future and you're expecting all these other files to sort of exist as, as multiple SCML files, it's not something that will happen here because the expectation is that you're going to create 
this archivable XML version of your publication, and that will exist as the single HTML file. Correct. And so here, once we go um, to the stats um, button, you'll see that it give, gives you a breakdown of your file. It gives you, um, you know, your images. Um, if there's um, any special characters that are, um, you know, uh, specific, like, for example, Hebrew, Arabic, and things like that, it'll show up here. It also gives you a breakdown of each of the um, um, styles used in this file. So this is good as a good check. It gives you word count and character count. Um, it gives you a good idea, a good overview of your file. Um, so at this point, we would download our SCML file. We're going to go ahead and do that now, right? That drops it again, downloads folder. I'm just going to go ahead and take that and go to my structure over here. And I'm just going to create a new folder and call it SCML. So OTN ebook SCML. Again, just for organizational purposes, and that way I keep files separate. Notice that now my SAM file is correct, and now I'm not going back to it. But if I were, if I didn't have a need to go back to it, it is there, and I'm not messing around with it or, or creating any issues on that end. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the SCML file in Sublime. And again, if you don't have that, the colors, remember, all you have to do, the syntax highlighting, all you have to do is go down here to the bottom right, click on that, scroll down towards the bottom, and click XML. And that will give you the syntax highlighting. Um, and you can actually set it up so that it always does this. Um, if you go up to the top here, and it says open all with current extension as, and then you just set that to XML, which is why I have it set up that way so that it automatically opens up with the syntax highlighting as I need it to be. And so at this point we have our SML file and this is um, the, as Tim described, the archivable you know, uh, document that we, is sort of our base document. From here we can go back to Word, from here we can uh, go to typeset or go to ebook or any, um, or any of those conversions. Um, and so we have a QC list available for that. And as I said um, at the beginning of this hour, uh, we're not going to go down the QC list because I'll show you now. Um, I think if Tim could share that direct link, it'd be great. And see it was SML QC. And you'll see that it has a lot of the same um, sort of going over, like is the file name correctly? You know, um, is the information in the hub included? Um, is it valid? The last thing that we actually checked in the SAM file, we again can check it here, the hub will do that for you. Um, and here you'll see that there's um, a couple extra things for like sprints, uh, print uh, specific issues. Um, as you can see here, like for example, when you have C above, which will no longer apply in a, um, in a digital text. So you should you know, change that to C preceding or C after or something like that. Um, if that is your choice, you could also leave it as is if you want it to be an exact representation of the print book. The continued lines, which we checked um, in the SAM. So we're sort of skipping all over those. Um, and as we get down, you'll see like, okay, now if you have front matter, make sure that the ISBN uses N dashes rather than M dashes and so on and so forth. I do invite you to go through this list, um, you know, in more detail when you have some time because it, um, it points out certain things and you can see why we would uh, search for it. But again, remember it's a checklist meant to catch errors and make sure that your file is as uh, perfect as it can be at that particular uh, stage. Um, so the only thing we're going to actually do to our SCML file in this instance is we're going to change the the extensions of the images because they're currently PNGs to JPEGs because it's what we use in um, in eBooks, right? So we'll go back to Sublime. I have that open here, mm -hmm. and we're going to bring up our site, our search, our actually our replace. So Control H on PC. And I believe it was Control Command Option F on Mac, um, and that'll bring up the, the two bar here, uh, search and replace. And what we're going to search for is period. I put a slash in front of the period because the period is a regular expression. That means any character. I'll actually show you. Hopefully, I won't break my computer when I 
do this. But if I hit find next, it will actually just find anything because the period just means any character. When you do a slash in front of it, you're saying that it's a literal period. So actual period, that's what we're searching for, right? And we're searching for P and G because all our images are PNG. We're going to replace that with period. Here you don't have to do the slash because the replace with is literally what's in the replace, right? And we're gonna replace it with a JPG, right? And so uh, I'm gonna test out my uh, search and replace. I'm gonna find this one. It's on line 71, figure 0101.png. I'm gonna replace and it automatically hops to the next one. So that's why I noted the line number. So I'm gonna scroll back up to line 71 and I see that my replace uh, worked correctly. Because it worked correctly, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit replace all. I don't have to do that for the entire file, right? And if I wanted to, I can just scroll down to the next image and see, hey, it's no longer .png, it's .jpg. Right? We're gonna go ahead and save that. And at this point, we're gonna take our file I'm just going to validate it because I did do a change. Um, you know, I, I made a replace, and so I just want to make sure that I didn't mess anything up. So I'm just going to go to Build, so Scribe Inc. Build, DTD Validation. It's best practice to always do this. It takes two seconds, and you can save yourself a lot of headache of having to upload and then go back to your file and realize that you know you replaced you know one of these uh, quotation marks, which would break the file. Um, so. We'll go ahead and save that. And then I'll just minimize that to get it out of the way. Back to this. And so I'll have my SCML file here. I'll go back to the hub here to the top. And go to my demo file. And I'm going to upload the SCML. So again, upload. Click upload here. Go back. Go to SCML, open, upload files. And so you'll have your SCML here, our checks mark green, so everything is good. 